Good morning. It is the Drive to School podcast. Joining me, Pastor Goodman, today is Pastor Matt Richard. How are you doing today, Pastor? Good. Good to see you, Harrison. It's good to see you. I got to, um, I didn't get to do the yard work that you got to do, but uh, I'm glad that you got to go outside and get a little bit done while it was nice. Um, we're going to, we're going to drive to school today and uh, you're, you've been tackling, what does Jesus say about? Because of all the stuff that everybody fights about, we, we do want to fall back on what our Lord actually says, if we want to kind of come up with an answer. Um, and so for us, uh, we, we've almost got a, a topic that we want to ask him about. Uh, what does Jesus say about how government works with family, works with church? How, how do all of these, these bodies interact? Um, was there, is there a fancy word for this? Yeah, the, 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 what you're describing is called, we call it the three estates, right? So the three estates, think of uh, three spheres, three silos, right? Uh, three different uh, sectors, if you will. And uh, we, we, we hear Christ talk a lot about these kind of things. Uh, one of the most uh, familiar ones would be where he'd say, give unto Caesar what is Caesar, and what is unto God, God. And so he just divides the two. And he clearly divides the two that there's the estate of the uh, government um, and there's the estate of the church. And we would add a third one in there that we see clearly defined in scripture. And that's the estate of the family. In fact, uh, the book of Titus, we're in Paul writing to Titus. Uh, chapter one, I believe, is on the church. Chapter two is on the family. Chapter three of Titus is on the uh, government itself. So we see huh. the three estates right there. And so, so I guess, I guess maybe the question is, okay, well, so what, right? So what, what is the purpose of this? Well, I think if we think about this, each of these spheres, these silos, these uh, estates, they serve to uh, provide for God's creation. And so we can think of, uh, properly speaking, we can think of the uh, government, the, the estate of the government, they use the sword, right? Mm -hmm. And the sword is used for keeping good order and control and disciplining um, unruliness and, and theft and crime and so forth. And so we think of the sword when we think of the state um, and the government, right? And then when we think of the family, we think of mercy, right? We think of a father and a mother, uh, you know, providing food and shelter and uh, mom providing kisses and hugs and dads, uh, you know, uh, you know, providing uh, good discipline in the house and, and uh, mom and dad providing food and clothing. And that's mercy, right? And then we think of the church. The church is going to be all about the word and sacrament, the forgiveness of sins, uh, the gifts of the gospel. So we see all three of those. And so when a person has all three of those functioning and doing their job well, uh, as I say, kind of loosely, by golly, right? Things are good, you know? <laughs> Right. When you have all three of those functioning and working well, uh, when, when, when do we ever get to see that? Um, I, I, I love the concepts of them, but it, it's sort of frustrating to watch it play out in, in practice because, I mean, well, the, the number of broken families that we have are probably equal to or greater than the ones that are, are not. Um, and more and more, there, there's sort of talk about where does church and state fit together? And so um, kind of the common thing that, that I hear the most is that there's a separation between church and state, but that really just means that the church should have no opinions that touch politics um, or practice their religion in a way that, that sort of um, interferes with somebody else's politics. Um, but also, where do, where do your beliefs play themselves out and and what's the role of Christians in society and should you take a political stance on things and what do you do when you see families that are broken and you want to help because it's not being helped like in theory these are great that you have a father who, who and a mother who work together to raise up their children you have a government that always does the right thing to protect its people and you have a church that is uh, utterly without error and sin and definitely only gives the the, the gospel to sinners but we got this world so <laughs> help. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, so we, we can, we can look at the ideal and what, what they're, they're intended to, you know, and mm -hmm. God has good gifts for us and he intends it for, to be a certain way, but then sin wreaks havoc on all this, obviously. And so uh, tragically, what we see is that when the family breaks down, right? So when the family breaks down, mercy breaks down, then the average person is, okay, where do I go? And then obviously the, one of the first places they go is they go to the state, they go to the government. And they seek from the government that which the family has failed to give them. And um, unfortunately, what happens when the government has limited resources, then individuals will come to often kind of the progression is then to the church. Um, when I have people come into uh, St. Paul's here, they want money or they want food. 
Um, my, my first question is, is not, did you go talk to the state? My first question is, where's your family? You know, and I try to do it very, very gently. Where's your family? And oftentimes what happens, uh, the family has actually pushed them out, whether it's been drug abuse or whatever, they burn bridges. I said, well, okay, before I give you any food or, or things like that, we should try to repair the family because um, the family's that support of, of mercy for you. Well, I don't want to deal with my family. Well, okay. If, if you're not dealing with your family, if that's broken down, then obviously then you do have to look to the state or the church. And that's, that's one of the unfortunate things. Now there's other times where, you know, so uh, the one, when, when one of the estates fails, then it seems like the other states have to pick up the slack, right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that that's what ends up happening when, when the government fails to actually wield the sword and, 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 and do a good job of that, then the family sometimes has to pick up that uh, for protection, protection and so forth. Um, so you have that on the one, one hand, but then the other hand that you have is that sometimes in these estates, we like to cross the lines and we like to play on the other person's turf. And so one of the most common things, um, one of our former presidents, one of my biggest struggle with him is he just couldn't help it. He had to make his podium into a pulpit. He just couldn't help it. I'd be watching, watching the news and hearing a uh, political speech. And all of a sudden I would be yelling at the TV and, and my wife would go, what's going on? I said, well, he needs to stop being a pastor. He's trying to be, he's just changed the podium into a pulpit. And now he's, he's preaching and he's, he's, he's delving into the realms of redemption and forgiveness and all these things. That's the realm of the church. It's not the realm of the government. And so we have this tendency and then, and then pastors, right? We know this as pastors is tempting. We want to jump into the realm of the state. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, um, let me push on this just a little bit, uh, because first of all, everybody always does it with the best of intentions. Like it, it's, I don't believe that there's like a great, you know, uh, dark conspiracy, uh, for every pastor to become a politician, um, and just use the church for leverage. And I don't think there's necessarily either, um, a, a giant conspiracy that every government wants to eradicate Christianity entirely, um, and just is everything in its power doing to underhand it. And I, I also don't think that um, every family wants to, you know, form a little militia all to itself. They just want to be kept safe. Everybody has good intentions. Um, and, and you look at it and you're like, well, president's preaching about Jesus. Why could, why would you get upset about that? Uh, or or um, you're, you're talking about an important issue, like a, a pro-life agenda. Why wouldn't a, a pastor take a political stance on this? We're trying to help. Um, how, how does we're trying to help actually meet with, again, reality? Well, okay. So the, the, the problem with this is, and, and this is a conviction that, that uh, developed over the years, and it's ultimately comes down, especially for the pastor, let's just you know, focus on the pastor and the church itself, you know, the pastor and the church. When the pastor and the church, if a pastor and church is giving um, all sorts of energy towards, let's just say, a family, okay, so we think mercy. And uh, obviously there's a lot of homes out there and individuals who you know homeless and so forth. And, and for the church to help out, we would say, that's good. I mean, that's good. We, you know, to, to provide a helping hand, it may be a, a bowl of soup or some, some assistance to somebody. There's that, that's wonderful. God be praised. Right. Um, we, we talk about hospitality. That's important. Um, it's good to actually help out in the realm of politics and so forth to have a good orderly society. But the problem is this, especially for the church, when the church then devi or not deviates, but but reallocates their time and energy to mm. the family and the state, then what is it failing to do? It's failing to proclaim the gospel. And so there's many times, you know, as a pastor, and, and this is for all of us to consider, uh, and many times for me as a pastor, where I have things in the church that need to be done, maybe it's, you know, using a wrench to fix something. Um, I can certainly do that. I'm a pretty handy guy but I, I choose not to, because as soon as I start doing that, then that's time that I'm spending not talking about Jesus, not proclaiming the gospel. And so when the state itself is maybe helping out with the family, then that is energy and time that is not spending chasing bad guys and wielding the sword. And so we can do something with the best intentions and do it and do it well. But then the question we have to ask ourselves, what are we, what is the estate failing to do that it ought to be doing, you know? And so good intentions. Yep, absolutely. But then what are you not doing? And especially for the church, that is the key thing for the church. And this is, you know, what it all comes down to. The church is to be uh, the place where the word and sacrament go out, the forgiveness of sins, the, the, the message of Christ, um, because frankly, the, the, the government is not going to be doing it. And many, many families, unfortunately, are, you know, are failing in that, unfortunately. So there has to be one place where the Jesus is proclaimed, crucified and resurrected. And, and it's got to be the church. 
And if it's not the church, then who else is doing it? Right. So it's not only getting messier um, because we have limited resources, but some of it too is, is sort of the optics of it. So um, it, it changes what your conscience can bear. Um, so think about it this way. So um, it's the government's job to wield the sword and it's the pastor's job then to proclaim the forgiveness of sins, the church's job to, to offer grace. Um, if all you do is uh, talk to me about rights and wrongs of society. Uh, don't get me wrong. That it's true. It's right from the Ten Commandments. But if I expect you to wield the sword against my sins, I sure don't want to come to you for confession. And quite frankly, it goes the other way, too. If the government's supposed to wield the sword to, to protect people, to, to keep people safe, and all they want to talk about is redemption, um, well, as sooner or later, somebody's kind of got to keep things in line. And if, if there's no actual well, punishing of evil and rewarding of good from Romans 13. Um, how do you how do you look at the government with any kind of society that, that's supposed to be civilized? Right. Well, and then this ultimately comes down to, I mean, ultimately comes down to each of these estates are good, you know, and it's it's they're 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 good for society, they're good for us, and they're they're their intent and purpose, right? So forgiveness means a grace, which is the church. So we think of forgiveness, redemption, that theme, uh, the state, uh, sword, right? And the family mercy, and all three of them are good. But like like we've we've hit here, when one of them fails, one of the other states has to pick up the slack. Or the other thing is people can become discontent, right? Uh, discontent with their vocation, and they want to do the other the other silo. They want to do the other one. I had a friend that once said, you know, being being in a, <laughs> being the government, being a politician is just not that sexy, right? It's not that exciting, you know. It's just you you write laws, you pass laws, and laws are what you know, lines, blah, blah, blah. And so what happens is this, this affinity, this, this attraction to wanting to what do, do mercy or to do uh, forgiveness. And, 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 and same thing with, with uh, pastors and families, we can, we can forget our, our vocation, which we can hit maybe next week, this idea okay. of vocation. And, and uh, what we do is when we neglect that one vocation, then we, we we're failing our neighbor and the way that uh, things ought to be, which again, happens all the time. And which is the reason why we constantly need repentance, being made aware of these things and uh, to be forgiven and being placed back into our positions. Right. You, you touched on something just briefly. I think it's important to sort of recognize that the estates can covet, uh, or at least the people inside of them can covet. And, and that tends to be um, what sort of couples along with the best of intentions to make a mess. And so the, the father would, would sort of covet the power of the government to protect and sort of want more for himself. The pastors, especially as, as um, Christianity is on the decline, I've seen the Christian church uh, want power again, want to be the majority voice. And so they, they lean further into the state. And I've seen that the state, like you said, it's, it's, it's not sexy work and so they they want to help people and so they start to lean into places that well like like the family which is given primacy for that yeah and, and it goes back to, you know the whole thing is the right intention right uh the right intention but then when you do that then what are you what are you failing to do what mm -hmm. you ought to do and uh so it goes from from a from a good from a good intention but that good intention can from our catechism we've we've heard this before the sin of omission right the things that we ought to do that we just don't do uh, so it's involuntary, but then as a result of what doing this good work over here, we're failing the greater work that we're called to do uh, for our neighbor. And uh, it's, it's a huge conviction. Uh, it's, and then it is messy, absolutely is messy. And but then, but then this brings up the whole point you hit on this before, Harrison, is okay, what happens when you do have, let's just say the family just just utterly fall apart? Okay, well, then you know what, by God's grace, um, you know, the pastor proclaimed the forgiveness of sins, the best of his ability. And at the same time, he might have to be a father figure, you know, at the same time. Um, I've over the years, I've had many, many young men. Uh, they've looked to me as, as a father figure and uh, I, I'm honored by that. And, and I can do that to the best of my ability, you know, but it can't be at the expense of forgetting the gospel and proclaim the gospel, but uh, that's the messiness of life. And, and so we pray the Lord would give us strength and endurance uh, to, to pick up the slack and the vocations uh, that fail and to be compassionate to one another uh, when those uh, estates, when they start falling apart. I was going to ask just to kind of conclude, what would Jesus say? And, and I think that last bit was exactly it. Um, I, I can't ask any more uh, of that. So uh, our, our Lord would say, you know, if you're in the family, um, take care. And if you're in the, the church, uh, hear the gospel. And if you're in the government, uh, create good order, but also love your neighbor, work in compassion. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, good stuff. It's good awesome. stuff. Thanks. Thanks so much for being with us today, Pastor. Uh, look forward to next week. We'll talk about vacation then. 
Yeah, sounds great. Good to see you, awesome. Harrison. Have a good one.